Los Angeles, California. Land of sunshine. It's no place to be a square peg, believe me. Oh, but did I mention the women? I've never seen a city that was so crammed with a smog line with gorgeous women. Fire raging in my soul. Grey's desire saints can't control. It's taken cheap out of the corner of my eye. There's a place where madness is its own reward. A destiny awaits those driven to its source. Some people know it from the second they were born. I want more. If only I could have looked like that in a pair of jeans, then this nightmare of mine would have never happened. Searching for more I've walked down these unforgiving streets Inside each conversation in my sleep See the city shed its skin a thousand times She's a predator loose upon the world Chosen for its venom, I'm untold. Sidewalks beneath a hill, like broken bone. But I want more. Well, if you aren't rich or famous or beautiful in Los Angeles, you're gonna go home alone. You're gonna be just like me. I'd left home over a year ago, but discovered there wasn't a place for me out there in the real world. And I have to laugh now, because I thought coming home was going to be the answer to stop me from my slow spiral downwards. I believed returning to the bosom of my family would save my life. Boy, was I ever wrong. I'm just using mugshots. Looking back, I realized that you can't treat a person like they're inconsequential. I would look at them like they don't belong all their life without breaking something inside them. And if the hurt that grows in their heart doesn't turn inward and eat them alive, it's gonna turn outside. And a lot of people are gonna pay. Searching for more I want too much I'd started hanging out in the clubs about a year ago Seeing as how our forefathers fought and sacrificed for our rights to the pursuit of happiness I didn't want to let them down I guess I was just looking for a way to be around people, to make contact. The club scene could get pretty lonely sometimes, but it was still better than sitting home alone and surfing the net. After my last relationship, I'd finally reconciled myself to the fact that I just wasn't cut out for that sort of thing. Sometimes I think relationships are like taking two unrelated pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and forcing them together till the edges bend and gnarl. They may stay together, but... In the end, the picture isn't anything you can recognize. Look, I can't let you in here with those shirts, all right? That's how it is. Hey, what can I do? He said it's a two dollar way to last. Sure, if you dress for a blue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, who your jets there, Ace? Where do you think you're going? Inside. I'm a, I'm a regular here. I don't remember you. Back of the line. What do you mean you don't remember me? I just tipped you last night so I wouldn't have to wait. Hey, you know what? I'm drawing a little blank on this whole tip thing, all right? You want to clear the door, please? Hey, Bear. Hey, Mr. Fisher, hey, how, how are you doing? doing? Table's all set. Good man. All right. Hey, good evening. All right. Good evening. Hey, hey. come on, man. You're going to let me... Relax. They have reservations, okay? Hey, Michael. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. Hey, I got some new jeans. <laughs> a little short slick. You know, you should bunch up on your boot like this. Hey, how you doing? Oh, hey, Amy, how's it going? How you doing? Uh, Thanks. Hey, are you going in? Oh, yeah. Come on. Hey, Mikey, how you doing? Same old, same old, dude. All right. Did you get those tickets for Judge Judy, all right? Oh, are you kidding me? My mom's still going off about that. Amy Pat. 
Alright, you got room inside? Sure, help yourself. Hey, come on, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is he with you? Yeah, he's with you. Alright, okay. All right, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, everybody, relax, okay? They had reservations. Relax. Hey, do you think that I should grow a goatee? You want to look like everybody else? You do. <laughs> yeah, well, it works for me. Oh, hey, there's Cheryl. I'll catch you later. And afterwards, the casting director says, Kato, you're too good for the part. I'm not going to give it to you. It'll hold you back. <laughs> so they were black with little silver studs on the toe. So cool. I'd kill for a pair of boots like this. I'm telling you, finding the right pair of boots is as hard as finding a man in this town who's over 30 and not on Viagra. Hi, Christian. My name's Carla. You probably don't remember me, but I met you at Keanu's party last Friday night. No, that was Christy. No, that was Natalie. No, that was Richie. I was the naked one on the coffee table. He remembers me. <laughs> oh, could I get a light beer, please? I've lived here eight months, and I've yet to meet a native Californian. I can't believe it. It's so true, isn't it? Hey, man, you got the time? Oh, yeah, um, it's 12.30. And you just met your first native Californian. I was actually born right around the corner from here in uh, Cedar Sinai Hospital. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I haven't always lived here. I moved back east for a while. Uh, the weather just stinks, and uh, so I came back to L.A. a couple years ago. Okay, can I buy you a drink? Let's go take a ride on my Harley. Yeah, fantastic! Hi. Oh, those are, those are great chains that you got on. Where'd you get them? I guess I called Amanda that night because I was feeling desperate. Months of drifting around by myself had left me feeling kind of empty. Even though we broke up almost a year ago, I still considered her to be my best friend. Grande mocha, grande latte. Thank you. I was really surprised when you called me. So was I. So what have you been doing? <laughs> Same old dick. No, I'm, I'm fine. I've been working at mug shots. Oh, so you quit Gladstones? Yeah, too many people. <laughs> you are the only waiter in town looking for a restaurant that wasn't busy. It is really nice to hear you laugh. It's a good thing you waited so long to call me. I wasn't laughing much last year. Sorry. No, no, don't be. People should be happy. You did what made you happy. I really didn't want you to stay with me if you weren't happy. I did, though. I mean, I did want to be happy. Yeah, that's what I said. No, no I, mean, I wanted to be happy with you. I, I just didn't know how. And that's the reason I called you. I want. It takes work to be happy. It doesn't just happen. You have to work at it. Um, let's go. It's getting a little crowded in here. We get crazy. <laughs> Sorry. How's it going, Slip? Yeah, Michael, Michael, Amanda, Amanda, Michael. <laughs> See, we can't stay. We've got an early morning tomorrow, so uh, we're gonna go. You don't mind if we cut it short, do you? Of course not. State in history. 20 minutes. Hey, do you want to try it again? Could you call me before 1 in the morning next time? Yeah, how about tomorrow night, 8 30? Go to El Diablo's, have some quesadillas. Come on, Amanda. I really need a friend right now. I'd like to try to be one, too. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow.
Who is the playing Jane? Don't tell me she was your girlfriend. No. No, she's, uh, she's just a friend. Um, Michael, I've been meaning to ask you a question. Yeah? Where did you get your jeans? What, these? No, I found them in the garbage can behind my apartment. Perfect fit, huh? There's Heather. Talk to the girls a second. Sure. Sure. I'll go right back to you. Are you on TV? No, I'm not. Oh. I have to pee. And so does she. And so does she. I hated Michael for what he said about Amanda. And I hated myself for being ashamed of her. But I hadn't lied exactly. We were just friends now. And actually, she'd given me some excellent advice. You had to work to be happy. The funny thing is, I'd had every intention of meeting Amanda. I knew she was sitting there waiting for me. But I just couldn't bring myself to go. Sure, it sounds crazy, but I had this feeling that something important was about to happen to me, and it was going to happen tonight. Did you see that? She looked at me. I knew I didn't stand a chance with such a goddess, but my male ego kept thinking that she might have smiled at me outside. Still, I figured I'd probably just imagined it. After all, what could I possibly have in common with a creature like that? You'll never know, unless you talk to her, pal. It takes work to be happy, remember? Dick? Thanks for your help. You wouldn't need a goatee with a woman like that on your arm. You'd be Mr. Popular. Go get her. He's right. You'll finally fit in. Hey, Dickie. Is this what you really want? A woman like that can get any guy she wants. You're nobody. You don't even own a cell phone. Even if she likes you, how do you plan on keeping a girl like that? How far would you go to keep a girl like that? I'd do anything for a girl like that. Well then, don't tell me. Tell her. Yes? I'd do anything for you. What? I'd do anything for you. You would? Yeah. Okay. Why don't we start with the light? No, 
No, wait, don't take them off. Okay. Blue jeans turn me on. I want it with your jeans on. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's it, baby. to get up. Shit, you scared me. Rise and shine, sleepyhead. <sighs> I could look at you all day. No problem. But right now, I need to be looked at in the kitchen. Wow, love the jeans. These pictures are great. Mm. You're incredible. Come on, it's getting cold. I can't believe I'm here. Why? It is your apartment, isn't it? Nah, I'm, I mean, I mean, coming home with a woman like you. <laughs> I, I must be dreaming. <laughs> well, wake up, dreamboat. Hey, you want your sausage? Huh? <sighs> you, um, you always eat like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is, but when you're having incredible sex, I always eat like a pig. I think it must be hormones. You had incredible sex. Yeah, and you know what? What? Now, I want to work off my breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Baby? Mm-hmm. Do me a favor. Anything for you, anything. <laughs> Leave your things on. Nice to see you again. Are you okay? Last night at the hot spot. You could have gone home with anybody you wanted. Why'd you pick me? Because of what you said. You know, when you came up to me at the club? You said you'd do anything for me. You did mean it, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Will you prove it? Sure, how? How? <laughs> what do you want me to do with that? Why did I do it? <laughs> Come on. It was a small price to pay for the evening we'd spent together. And after all, I said I'd do anything. I need another drink. Okay, I'll get the waitress. Hey, what are you drinking? Hey, Michael. Uh, tequila? Hey, Chloe. Three gold. Mind if I rest my feet here for a second? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Perry. I'm Michael. It's like this is quite a step up from the last chick I saw you with. Oh, really? And who was that? 
Amanda's just an old friend. Amanda? What an ugly name. Oh, wow. Look at your jeans. My God, where did you get those? You found them in a garbage can. Aren't they perfect? I love them. You ought to have a pair like this, Dick. You're a lucky guy, Michael. I'd say Dick's a lucky guy at this table. Thank you. Where is that? Ohio, just south of Youngstown. But we had to move when I was eight because the town was burning down. What do you mean? Well, Perdition was a coal mining town with a network of tunnels running under it. And about 30 years ago, there was an explosion that started a fire in one of the mine shafts. Well, they just couldn't put it out because it was down too deep. Must have let it burn? Yeah, they had to. They had no choice. They couldn't get to it. For years, you could see this, like, thick black smoke just seeping up out of drainage ditches and excavation sites all over town. It was like growing up in hell. Everybody figured it was just a matter of time until the town caved in. So people started moving out. But before my family could move, my daddy was murdered. Oh, really? How? Someone cut his head off while he was sleeping and hung it from the shower nozzle. Oh, Perry. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he was uh, shot when his body was shoved down a mine shaft. Wow. Did you ever find out who did it? I'd like to think my guardian angel. You know, sometimes even in hell, justice is served. Well, what happened to perdition? It's still burning, I guess. Well, that's a great story. <laughs> Oh, look, Michael. A chink in your armor. Yeah, it's new. Who did it? I don't know. But I'd like to kill whoever it was. Where are you going, baby? Bathroom. for asking. What have you been up to? I'm just here for drinks with my girlfriend, really. So, how are you feeling? Hmm. To be honest, I, f I feel a little bit funny. I know what you mean. I just wanted you to know that it was pure skank. Thank you. I appreciate that. The world could do well with less self-absorbed bastards. If you know what I mean. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. Check you later, dude. Keep the faith. Hey, I missed you. Was that guy a friend of yours? Ah, uh, kind of. You know, not really. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him pay for something since I met him. I sure liked you, though. Yeah, well, he's a real jerk. No, oh, it looked like you guys were getting along fine when I left. Why don't you ever tell me about your childhood? <laughs> get over yourself. You've been too busy trying to get into my panties to ask. <sighs> Look, lover. 
I'm only telling you this because um, I think you should know. I mean, I'm not trying to upset you, but after you left, your friend was all over me big time. Oh, forget about it. He's a creep. I sent him packing. Anyway, you know, you're just going to have to get used to it, sweetheart, because it happens to me all the time. That's it. You don't have to go home. You just have to go. Like it might rain. Hope it does. I love the rain. Magic happens in the rain, huh? <laughs> that creep. I'd like to kill him. He doesn't have enough babes hanging around him already. He's got to come and try to steal mine. Oh, we love baby. Your man is still intact. I hate him too. Wow. What do you know? It's your friend, Michael. Let's give him a little scare, huh? What are you gonna do? Wanna teach him a lesson? What are you doing? Wow. Just do it. He's not there. What are you talking about? We knocked him out of his shoes. He's not there. Okay, find him. Huh? Find him. He may still be alive. Uh-oh. You think he's dead? Yeah. We've got to call for help. Do you think you can reach him? I guess, but I don't want to touch him. Let's take his chains. What? Do you think you can reach the body? Yes. Then take his chains. Are you crazy? Dick, he's dead. He's not gonna need them. In fact, he'd probably want you to have them. I can't steal blue jeans from a dead guy? You know, you're being ridiculous. Those jeans are perfect. You said so yourself. Now get out and go get those jeans and hurry. It was an accident. I tried to stop, you saw. It was slippery. It was not our fault. Besides, look on the bright side, huh? You did say you wanted to kill him. Now he's dead. You mean it. Yes, you did. You did mean it, Dick. You know it, and I know it. I'm right. Aren't I? Look at me, Dick. I'm right. Aren't I? It's okay. He tried to take something that belonged to you, baby. Me. And you stopped him. I mean, you were just protecting your property. That means something to me. No! Okay, you listen.
listen to me. We will not tell the police. It was hit and run, Dick. Manslaughter. Do you have any idea what that means? We could go to jail for life. Now, there were no witnesses, okay? Nobody saw us and nobody heard us. So you are gonna keep your mouth shut. And you know why? Because you promised that you would do anything for me. And I believed you. Should I have believed you, Dick? Take me, baby. Take me to Denim Heaven, huh? The horrible thing is, she was right. Part of me had wanted to kill Michael, and that same part was glad that he was dead. But the bigger part, the saner part, it knew I'd just stepped over an invisible line, and I was out of control. Yo, Frankie, how's the book? Terrible. I, I think I got writer's block. I... Her juices flowed like a Discovery Channel volcano. Like I said, I'm blocked. It's not a block, it's a wall. So what do you got? Traffic just handed me that. It's a hit and run. What'd they give it to us for? Maybe, maybe not. They stole his pants? Yeah, and left his wallet. Only in Hollywood, man. What? Not the murder. I mean, it's some kind of fashion statement. Good thing they gave it to us. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Are you still wasting your time at that picture store? It's not a picture store. It's called your mug shots. Well, the point is, if you had a real job, you wouldn't be having these problems. What's wrong with that wreck of yours now? Dented the fender last night. Dickie, you're almost 24 years old and you're still renting. Don't you ever want to own a condo of your own? Yeah, Dad, it's my fondest dream. Well, then why won't you let me help you? Because I hate feet. All right, business hasn't been so good recently, but I could still afford to pay you eight bills a week. That's not bad, is it? Eight hundred dollars a week. Can I work by myself? Mostly, yes. Hey, Dad, I met a girl. Oh, yeah, what happened to what's her name? I broke up with Amanda over a year ago. Good, I never liked her. Boring. There's nothing wrong with Amanda, it was me. I mean, Perry, she's the new girl. She's incredible. Well, that explains the job interest. She must be good for you. Dad, what does it take to be happy with a woman? Did I ever tell you the story about the genie in Malibu? No. Well, there's this guy walking down the beach in Malibu. Suddenly, he sees in the sand a genie. Picks it up, he rubs it, and sure enough, the genie comes out. The genie says to him, Listen, I'm a very busy genie. I have got no time for three regular wishes. I'm going to grant you one big wish. What do you want? The guy says, Well, I'm afraid of flying, Mr. Genie, and the ocean always makes me seasick. But I've always wanted to have a vacation in Hawaii. So what I want from you, Mr. Genie, is to build me a bridge from here to Hawaii. The genie looks at me and says, what are you, nuts? You know what you're asking for? The cost of the labor alone, the engineering for the mooring and the structural supports. No, 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 no. When I said I give you a big wish, I meant something practical. Ask me for something else, something possible. So the guy says, well, all right. Uh, I've been married and divorced four times. So what I would like you, Mr. Genie, to tell me is what is it with women? What makes them laugh? What makes them cry? What makes them think the way they think? What makes them do those things they 
do. So the genie looks him right in the eye, and he says, so tell me, you want this bridge two lanes or four? Why do you bother with that? She's dead. This was a beautiful woman. That's how she should be remembered. I want her to look her best. You've done a beautiful job. Can you use any more work this week? I'll let you know. The African lion or Panthera Leo is equally comfortable in a step in the bush. Does it bother you? Of course not. I love to watch wild things eat. No, I mean Michael. <sighs> not this again. Dick, it was an accident, okay? And yes, that bothers me too, but I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life worrying about it. You know, if that's what you wanna do, then fine. That's for you to decide. I'm not gonna sit in this apartment and hide anymore. It's silly. I wanna go out tonight, have some fun. If you don't want to go, I'm sure I can find somebody who will. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Daisy. I'm Cosmopolitan. Straight up. Dick. I love your jeans, Dick. Oh, them they're a family heirloom. Nice girl. Daisy, huh? Her name is actually Daisy? I don't want you talking to any little flowers when you're with me. Do you understand? Hey, you were the one who was dancing with some guy. Excuse me, guys. Well, I was trying to make a little magic. But you weren't playing, were you? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. No, I don't. And where did you learn to dance like that? A woman's a mystery. A man's a dog. And dogs love cheese. <laughs> You're just like crazy. And you. 
are just like all the others. <laughs> No. Leave them on. Oh, come on, Barry. I mean, can't we just do it once without me wearing Michael's jeans? It doesn't feel right. Our first real fight, and I had never read the girlfriend rule book. Never go to sleep while your girlfriend is upset. Girlfriend rule book, page one. I want too much. I want more. I want you. Perry had left me, and I didn't know what to do. Girlfriends don't reconcile with boyfriends who grovel. Girlfriend rule book, page 42. Anyway, honey, um, I'm really sorry about what happened last night. And, um, you know, call me when you get in, okay? I love you. Bye. desperate and willing to try anything. An expensive present is never inappropriate. Girlfriend rule book, page 77. That'll be $450 plus tax. Perfect. How long you work there? This is my first week. Place isn't like it. We should be working at like a linen store or something. We, really. We haven't been together in a while, Dick. Maybe I've changed. Sorry about dinner the other night. I meant to show up. Forget it. I kind of knew you wouldn't show up. It would have been out of character. What did you buy? Oh, it's a present for a friend. Oh, what's her name? Never mind, I really don't want to know that. Um, I gotta go back to work. It was really nice seeing you again. Call me sometime, okay? Amanda, look. It's for you. It's for me? Thank you. <laughs>
Dear Dick, I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, but I can't see you anymore. It just wasn't working out. Maybe someday we can be friends. Well, Lots of love, Perry. What does that mean? You've reached Perry. I'm not home right now, but leave a message. And if you're lucky, I'll get back to you. Perry, it's Dick. Call me. I need to talk to you. I need you. Bye. to the vehicle. Please step back from the vehicle. You have 10 seconds to comply. Perry, it's me, Dick. You are too close to the vehicle. Please step back from the vehicle. You have 8 seconds to comply. Fuck you. Perry? Perry, please, I need to talk to you. Shut the fuck up! It's 4 in the fucking morning! Fuck you! Fuck you! You are too close to the vehicle. Please step back from the vehicle. You have 5 seconds to comply. Fuck you! Hey, asshole, get away from my car before I come down there and cave your head in. Where's Perry? I said, get away from my car. Not until you tell me where Perry is. What? No, he won't get away from my car. Hey, look, I don't know where Perry is, okay? Now get away from my car! Please, have a little courtesy. People are trying to sleep. Oh, take a pill. Up yours! Hey. Who you got in there? Is that Perry with you, you fuck? Uh, that's it. I I'm gonna crash his skull. Perry, honey, talk to me, baby. Perry? What did I do? You are too close to the vehicle. Please Shut step back from the vehicle. Fuck up! You have two seconds to go. I've been tampered with! 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 I've been tampered with. I've been tampered with. I've been tampered with. I've been tampered with. Uh, Mrs. Gordy? Yeah! <coughs> yeah. Uh, Detective Brickard, LAPD. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about the accident you witnessed last week. Yeah, I already talked to the police the day after it happened. I know, it's just a follow-up. Well, look, 
Are you going to show me your badge or are we going to stand here all day? Sit down. Like I told the other officer, okay? They took off his pants, then they got in the car and they drove off. A man and a woman? Mm-hmm, yep. And you said it was a little automobile? Yep. A Nash Metropolitan. What did you say? A Nash Metropolitan, two-tone, white with turquoise. Did you tell Officer Carlisle it was a two-tone Nash? Sure. Well, at least I, 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 I think I did. <laughs> you like lacrosse trainers? <laughs> They're two-tone, just like the car. Nasty. Ain't that nasty? <laughs> Mrs. Gordy, no yeah. disrespect, but yeah, it was okay. quite late that night, and as mm -hmm. I recall, it was raining pretty heavily. How can you be so sure it was a two-tone Nash? Well, I have to be pretty stupid not to recognize my own car. I'm sorry? <laughs> They were parked right next to mine. Two Nash Metropolitans. Now, I might be getting old, but I can certainly recognize my own car. Perry, it's Dick. I need you to talk to me about what happened. I can change. I'd do anything for you, I mean it. Just, just give me another chance. I won't let you down, okay? Just call me. Hey, hey, those are mine. Those are mine! Call me. Ah! I'll do anything to kiss your ass. Come back here, you shit! Stop! I'll give you money! <sighs> those are my perfect jeans. Hit like that must have caused major damage to the fender. Check out the local body shops. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, I'll put some blues on it. Uh, I'm also going to run the uh, make and model through the DMV. You know, the coroner said the guy was loaded at the time of death. I thought I'd check out some of the local bars and restaurants. Not too many of them are open that late. I guess I know what we're doing tonight. Yeah, bring your jeans. What do you mean, back of the line? You've been letting me in here for the past four weeks. I'm the guy with Perry, remember? Look, sorry, guy. I'm drawing a blank on the whole Perry thing, okay? Back of the line. Oh, this is such bullshit. Fuck it. Fuck you. Fuck this. I'm, I'm gonna go home. I don't need this shit. I feel my creative juices flowing already. We ought to get out more often, you know? You got it. Harry, 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 honey, I need to talk to you. It's good to see you. Why won't you talk to me? I've been going out of my mind. Well, Dick, you know, I'm sorry, but it just wasn't working out for me. I had to leave. Why? What did I do? It wasn't that girl, was because she didn't mean anything no, to me, I swear. No, it wasn't the girl, Dick, and you know that. And so I thought you were different, and you're not. You're like all the men in my life. You make these promises, but you don't mean them. When push comes to shove, you can't deliver. 
No, I do mean it. I can't deliver. Right. You walked up to me in this very club and told me that you would do anything for me, remember? Yeah, I, I will. Within reason. Okay, I gotta go. Monty's gonna get mad. Don't call me anymore. Perry, wait. Hey. Talk to me. Hey, you heard what the lady said, right? Do I know you? Yeah, you're the little dipstick that dented my baby. Your baby? Your baby. I get it. You're one of those car freaks that treat their automobiles better than their woman. What do you do, Monty? You sneak down to the garage while everybody's sleeping and jerk off into the tailpipe? <laughs> I was messing with my bed. Yeah, my car. The other night. And I was being a dick. Come on, baby. Jerk, sure, you didn't have to do that. Are you all right? Hey. What? I love your jeans, man. Where'd you get them? You're a fucking nut. Come on, baby. He's not hurt. I'd hit rock bottom and knew what I had to do. Girls dig men of action. Girlfriend rule book, page 86. Psycho's gonna pay for this. Trust me. I'm gonna kill him. Looking back, I guess it was pretty stupid of me to kill Monty right in front of Perry's building. But let's face it, I wasn't thinking straight. If those two detectives had gotten to the hotspot even five seconds sooner, they probably would have recognized Monty. How could they help it? He was with the most beautiful woman in the club. Perry told me they interviewed everyone in the building, and her interview went extremely well. She said I shouldn't worry because she'd given one of the best performances of her career. And they didn't suspect a thing. And I've got a feeling they probably would have believed anything she told them. And guys are like that with gorgeous women. Even cops. And even though I now realize my partnership with Perry wasn't maybe the most constructive relationship I've ever had, I did learn a valuable lesson. You could never have too many pairs of perfect jeans. Turn the 
place. Take comfort that you've earned your place among the beasts. Molest his dictators and fool priests. All your sins will be put on display And you'll be forced to watch them every day Local DMV is a dry hole. Let's focus on the national computer. Maybe these two are out of state. Yeah, all right. And hope is as precious to a hooker as rain is to a desert. I have to start writing on fiction. I mean, you read in the papers about these ghetto kids who kill each other for a pair of designer sneakers. It's crazy, and it's getting worse. Take these blue jean killers, for example. This kind of stuff didn't go on when I was a kid. I know. Isn't it horrible? Nobody's safe anymore. It's gotten so I'm afraid to wear jeans. Exactly. I mean, what's it going to be next year? Sweater vests? I don't think so. Here, Pumpkin. Thanks. Honestly, the whole thing is falling apart. Dad's a behaviorist. His theory is that serial killers are created by a decaying society. Some of these so-called experts would have us believe that these fruitcakes are predisposed from birth, that it's all just genetics. Well, I'm sorry, I don't buy it. What do you think, Ferry? Why are the blue gene killers killing? Is it genetics or a decaying society? I'll take the King's society for 50, Dick. <laughs> Did you ever hear of Ed Gein? He was a Wisconsin serial killer. Made Jeffrey Dahmer look like a Girl Scout. Everybody in town knew him, said he was a good neighbor, kept to himself, never bothered anybody. The same old crap you always hear about these guys. Well, one day, a local merchant shows up on Ed's doorstep with a sweater that Ed left behind in his store. He wanted to return it, except Ed wasn't home. But what the hell, this is the heartland of America where nobody, including Ed, ever locks his door. So Mr. Good Samaritan just decides to leave the sweater inside the house. Well, it was one sick house, let me tell you. It turns out that this cheesehead, after he murders his victims, skins them and makes furniture with the hides. Whoa. This book was written by a psychiatrist who was assigned to psychoanalyze Ed. From the day Gein was incarcerated to the day he finally died in jail, this doctor studied, dissected the brain, if you will, of this human freak of nature to try and figure out why this monster did what he did. What made this guy make lampshades out of his neighbor's flesh? After 20 years of studies, the good doctor finally came up with an answer. So why did he do it? He was fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, is insanity contagious? The Nazi historians think so. They say Hitler infected a whole country. And what do you think? Of course. Why do you think I left Dick's mother? <laughs> Uh -huh. 
you think? How come you and your father never talk about your mother? What? Last night at your father's party, nobody mentioned your mother. And there wasn't one picture of her in the whole house. No, no. Come here. Mm. So, what's the deal? Is she dead or what? Uh, not exactly. She's, oh, oh, she's kind of insane. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of insane? Well, kind of insane that you go when you've killed somebody you love. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, hey, we haven't been out slumming in a while. What do you say to me? Go out tonight, have some fun. Uh, uh, that sounds cool. Oh, and by the way, mm -hmm. that little bimbo of your father's, Janet, has got the hods for you. If I get you anywhere near her or any other little bitches, I'll cut your head off while you're sleeping and hang it from the shower nozzle. Okay? Okay. Okay. Oh. 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 Nice shrinkage. Oh. Hey, Dick, Barry. Long time no see. How's it going? Yeah, same old, same old. You got room inside? Sure, help yourself, buddy. What's with the new look? Ah, blue jeans have become hazardous to your health, man. Did you guys read the papers? I don't need the stress. Oh, hey, look, relax. They had rest. Now, you know what? They're cooler than you. I swear, I think at that moment in time, my life had become perfect. I had everything I ever wanted. I had some money in the bank. I had my perfect jeans. And of course, I had Perry. I finally fit in. Actually, I was too cool to fit. I unfit. I wasn't one of the minions that stood in the lines outside the clubs anymore. And I had become more like a king or something. What a wasteland. There was one problem, however. That was jeans. So it's come to this. Jeans were the fuel that kept my denim kingdom afloat. And Unfortunately, jeans seemed to be becoming rarer and rarer by the second. Ouch, what? Blue jean alert. Okay, buddy, thanks. Oh, oh. Yeah, I... Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, watch out for that one. Oh, this is my good. <laughs> I am wasted. <laughs> oh, so, Jerry. Perfect. And those bugle boys you're wearing? Police, you're under arrest. Yeah. You said your mother killed someone she loved. 
Uh huh. Well, who was it? Me. This is your brain. This is your brain when you've been drinking. This is your brain when you've been drinking and are wearing blue jeans. Any questions? It's for you. Phoenix Express. Hey, stranger. Thanks for remembering. Do you want to have lunch? Mm. Mm. You're a cheap date. <laughs> I think we're gonna need to get a few more napkins. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Gee, I didn't even have to burp you. You'd make a wonderful mother. Yeah. Wanna have dinner tonight? Yes. <laughs> Eat your hot dog. I wanted to have my hot dog and eat it too. Do not, under any circumstances, lie to your girlfriend. Girlfriend rule book, page 98. Hmm. Perry, hey, listen, hon. Something's come up and I won't be home till later. Yeah, we're still going to visit mom, but he wants me to come and have dinner with him afterwards, okay? Great, so I'll meet you guys. Where are we going? No. No, see, it's always bad after we see her. It's better if I go alone. Dick, we're together now. We're a team. I mean, I, I, I want to share the good and the bad. Besides, it's your birthday. Of, of course we're a team, honey, but we're not joined at the hip. Some things I just need to do, do alone, okay? But if you do lie, make sure it's convincing. Just my opinion, no page number. Dickie, you're not trying. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mom, it's the mask. If you just let me take off the mask, I'm, I'll be able to blow out the candles, I promise. No. No, 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 no. I did it. I did it. Poisons, toxins, and germs, oh my. Poisons, toxins, and germs, oh my. Rosemary. Will you please try to control yourself? I'm fine. <sighs> Let's open your present. Thanks, Mom. I bagged it for you, Dickie. Oh, it's really sterile. <laughs> Look how small you are. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Do you really? I love it, too. It was taken before you died. I think it's the best pre-death photo I have of you. Oh, Dickie. Oh, you'd still be alive if only my milk had been pure. It's just that I didn't know that I was crawling with infection when I was nursing you. The doctors didn't tell me anything. I know, Mom. But it's not their fault. I should have seen it. It's okay, Mom. The light going out in your eyes. Mom. If I just hadn't been afraid to look at you, I'm sure I would have seen it. Mom. How could I be afraid of my own son? My own son! I can't take this anymore. This has got to stop. I'm... Dick, don't. I'm sorry, Dad. I... See, this has gone too far. 
I, we can't keep humoring her like this. It's, she's not getting any better. Mom. Mom, think now. How can I be dead if we just celebrated my 24th birthday? I'm sitting right here with you. I'm talking to you right now. I've been coming over for years. How, how can that be if I'm dead? I know that. You do? But sure. I didn't mean that you weren't alive, Dickie. But you've been saying I'm dead. But Dickie, you are dead. It's not your body that's dead. It's your soul. My poisoned milk killed your soul. And you can imagine how hard it is for me with you still talking and walking around. You see? Thank goodness that we've cleared this up. I've been saying for years, all this family needed was a little communication. Oh, I feel better already. We used to have so much to say. But now we just look the other way. Our constant search for cheaper thrills has given way to pills just to get us through the day. something wrong? Yeah. This cheeseburger sucks. Are you sure you want to be here tonight? Yeah, sure. Are you mad at me or something? Of course not. Why would I be mad at you? Dick, what's wrong? Hmm? I asked you, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Everything's perfect. You know, would you just eat and stop worrying about it so we can get out of here? You don't have to wait for me. I'm finished. Hey! What's your problem? I don't have a problem, Dick. You do. You asked me to dinner tonight, and now you're punishing me for accepting the invitation. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You haven't looked me in the eye once tonight. I don't deserve this. I really care about you. It's all right with me if you just want to be friends. I know that you're seeing someone, so what you want is just someone to talk to, someone to get your feelings out with. That's all right with me. I just want to be there for you. I just want to be whatever you want me to be. I love you. Just tell me what to be. Just tell me what you honestly want so that I can give that to you. You're so good, aren't you, Amanda? You're so unselfish. That's what irritates me about you. You know what makes me sick, the way you let me treat you? It's like, no matter how awful I am, you still love me. Maybe you have to be that way. Otherwise, who would hang out with you? I'm not exactly beating them away with sticks, are you? I don't know what's happened to you, Dick. You've been a lot of things to me, but up till now, you've never been cruel. Wait a minute, where are you going? It's my birthday, Amanda. Don't I deserve a quickie for old time's sake? We've reached the bitter end. 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 Forgive me. Look, I've become obsessed with my own selfishness. Uh, my life is really, really out of control. I was playing games, I don't know why. Look, you selfish. And that was manipulative of me. Sorry. Sorry.
Once you've cheated, please don't go home. Please. Girlfriend rule book, page 69. Telephone for you, Dick. Hello? Hey, stranger. Remember me? Harry. So, uh, you got on late last night? Yeah. Dad and I had a lot to talk about. What's up? I'm just wondering what time you're coming home tonight, baby. Uh, late, probably. Uh, Dad wants me to do a lot of paperwork. Like, 10 o'clock. Great. Well, um, stop and pick up some tequila, because I got a birthday surprise for you. Oh, yeah? What kind of birthday surprise? You'll see. Just be there. I'll see you at 10. Bye. Happy birthday, baby. Meet me in the bedroom for a big surprise. Amanda? Surprise. Oh, good evening, officers. So, uh, won't you come in? Are you Mr. Richard Pearson? Yes. Sir, do you own a two-tone Nash Metropolitan with Pennsylvania plates? No, I own a Mercedes-Benz. I wouldn't drive anything else. According to our records, you purchased a turquoise and white Nash in Paoli, Pennsylvania from Miss Elizabeth. Oh, you're referring to my son's car. Tell me the truth, officers. What has he done? What have you done? What have I done? Well, let's see. I invited Amanda there over for a little girl talk. Then I hit her over the head with a tequila bottle. Kind of broke that. Anyway, the real question is, what have you done? Huh? You should have burned it, baby. Women always go through their loved ones' pockets. Didn't you ever read the girlfriend rule book? It's a girl thing. Oh, and by the way, in the future, you might want to erase all ex-girlfriend's phone numbers from your address book, because it just might come back to haunt you. Lover. You aren't getting ready to leave me now, were you? Hmm? Because if you were, I hope you realize now that that is just not possible. Oh, what, Amanda? Your knight in shining armor has come to rescue you? I don't think so. Your knight has too many secrets to keep. This has gone far enough. Dark secrets. Stop it. For instance, could you love a man who kills for blue jeans? Hmm? Well, I could. And I guess that makes me the better person. Don't you think? Get Higgins on the radio and set up a search warrant. 
that Nash is probable cause after we pick it up. Let's pay Dick and his little girlfriend a visit. I got a feeling about this, too. No. No. No, no, Perry. We can't, we can't just kill her, okay? She knows, you idiot. If we let her go now, she'll run right to the police. We'll go to the gas chamber. No, see, she loves me. She won't turn us in. Oh, wake up, you stupid son of a bitch. You really think for one minute she could live with that on her lily white conscience? She's too good. She'll turn us in. Honey, you wouldn't turn me in, would you? <laughs> Look at that. She won't even lie to save her own life. <laughs> I'm sorry I told her, sweetheart. It's just I'm really possessive. If I could take it back, I would. Anyway, we've got no choice now. I just need your help one more time, and then it'll all be over. Don't worry. Just one last time. Police, open the door. Kick it in. Kick it in. Police, freeze. It's been a struggle, Frank. Blood on the pillowcase. This is Detective Frank Small calling in an APB. I'd gone full circle, I guess. I'd been an outsider. Then just for a moment, I was an insider. Now I was back on the outside staring in again. Well, even so, I'd accomplished a lot. In a sense, I was like one of those movie stars. I had achieved fame, risen from the depths, scaled the heights, only to find my time in the sun cut short by the fickle public. Nobody was wearing jeans anymore. Like the buffaloes that swarmed over the planet a hundred years ago, jeans had become virtually extinct, wiped out by the hunters that only killed for the sport. And of course, my mom had been right. I was dead. I just hadn't realized it. Where are we going? The circus. Dear Dick, happy 24th, happy birthday, love Amanda. Frank, check this out. H. Peter's Funeral Home. This is my real job, baby. Makeup girl to the dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Mrs. Fogarty, Mrs. Jenkins, Mrs. Hollister. This is my boyfriend, Dick. Say hello, Dick. Okay, then. Here's the plan. We kill Amanda, leave her in the casket, and let her be buried as a Mrs. Jenkins over there. Her funeral's tomorrow morning. Nobody will have any idea they buried the wrong person. Won't your boss see the body? Nope. Because, you see, after the embalming, nobody opens the coffin again. Unless I'm supposed to do makeup. But I'm not. Because it's closed casket. So not even the family will see the body again. As far as Mrs. Jenkins goes, you can just dump her off someplace on the way home. Brilliant, huh? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. It's just that there's one problem. What's that? I don't trust you anymore. Why not? Because you fucked that bitch. You see, a woman can never trust a man's fidelity. My mother taught me that. So did my father, actually. But uh, Daddy thought it was more prudent to demonstrate on me. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Why well, I'm so fucked up. <laughs> Hell, I'll bet even Amanda feels sorry for me now. Don't you, Amanda? Did your daddy teach you what to look for in a man? I'll bet it wasn't a hard dick, was it? <laughs> yeah. I have mentioned this before, haven't I? My mother's gun. The gun that killed my father. Well, let me rephrase that. The gun I shot my father with. You killed your father? Yeah. <laughs> And then I shoved his body down a mine shaft. Chilly, huh? Now, you have promised that you will do anything for me. 
So the only way I'm ever going to trust you again is if you prove to me once and for all we are in this together. So, you're going to have to kill her yourself. Uh, no, no, I can't. I can't. I, I can't. You said you'd do anything. Do it! I'm sorry, Amanda. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised. God, you men are a continual disappointment to me. The gun isn't loaded, Dick. But this one is. <laughs> Where'd you get that one? That was my mother's gun. This one's mine. I made you a man, Dick. I gave you a future. Don't, Perry. It's over. I made you fit. Let it go. Perry, don't shoot. Please. Hey! Better person. Go to hell. I learned a lot last year and just started to write it down. When your girlfriend is crazy, rules do not apply. Dick Pearson's rule book, page one. The Bible says if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Well, it took a while, but I guess she finally offended me, so. I did it, I killed her. All right, Mr. Pearson. Sign there. Believe it or not, everything turned out okay for everybody concerned. Except, of course, for all those guys that Perry and I killed. I hate to say it, but I think my father, as horrified as he was at what I'd done, he kind of liked all the attention he got. He said it was publicity you couldn't buy. After all, serial killers were his hobby. And what could be headier than being the father of one? Mom prospered too in her own way. Dad had her committed in preparation for the total mental collapse that was expected to follow when she found out what Perry and I had done. The funny part was that after she heard about the murders, she actually started getting better. The doctors couldn't understand it, but I could. I think she finally realized she wasn't totally crazy. She'd gotten her validation. I was dead. I didn't have a soul. The murders proved it. And as for me, well, you know how that goes. There's always good news with the bad. And the bad news was I got the gas chamber, but the good news was the venue for my appeals was Los Angeles. From Mr. Carp in Cell 10. He'd like to officially welcome you to death row. Good morning, Mr. Pearson. Beautiful day out, isn't it? Good morning, Otto. Yes, it is. In the meantime, I'm actually starting to feel at home here. Like I'm one of the guys. The killers here really respect me. It's an odd feeling to be warmed by the affection of monsters. But still, People need to feel that they fit in someplace. And if death row is the best you can do, you take what you can get, right? You know, Dick, I've never seen anything like this, and I've been working this snake pit for 25 years. What's that? Oh, this here. You guys, you get fan mail. You're all celebrities. I mean, they've been making movies about you maniacs since somebody invented the camera 100 years ago, but now 
we've got more stars on this cell block than they got on Hollywood Boulevard. Are you feeling a little jealous? Yeah, probably. Makes me think I ought to go out and whack somebody and tell my life story. I could support my family better. No, I wouldn't worry. It's just a trend. It'll all turn around soon enough. <laughs> I guess. By the way, did uh, you really go around killing all those guys just for their blue jeans? <laughs> yeah, I did. L.A. will bring that out of a person. You ever find your perfect jeans? Many times. But, you know, primo jeans. Primo jeans. Not till I came here. Nothing beats state issue. Nothing. If I had known, I would have just checked myself in. <laughs> but I guess the most amazing realization I've had concerns Amanda. I can't stay long. I just came to get a few things off my chest. You don't, you don't have to thank me, Amanda. Thank you? For what? You almost got me killed. I was in love with you. I would have done anything for you. I can't hate myself for being so stupid. But I can hate you. But I saved you. I, I took the rap for Perry's murder. You owed me that. You put my life in danger. And you killed people. For their genes. I never want to see you again. Don't write. Don't call. Don't expect a fruitcake from me at Christmas. You're dead to me. Goodbye, Dick. I finally realized I'm in love with Amanda and that I always have been in love with Amanda. She hates me now, but that doesn't matter because in a strange kind of way, she gave me a gift. It occurred to me that if I can love Amanda even though I know she hates me, well, maybe, just maybe, that means I have a soul after all. I'm probably just grabbing at smoke here, but still, it gives me hope. And hope is as precious to a death row inmate as rain is to a desert. <laughs> I've walked down these unforgiving streets. Inside each conversation in my sleep. I've seen the city shed its skin. Thousand times She's a predator Loose upon the world Maybe chosen for its venom I've been told
No late confessions or no desperate pleas. We'll save you from rob you from eternity. Oh, better. Someday you pay. We've reached the bitter end. Buzz of the cafes. We're like flies in the malaise. So superficial to the fact our love has jumped its tracks and vanished in a codeine haze. We've reached the bitter end. We've reached the bitter. We've reached the bitter end. We've reached the bitter. We've reached the bitter end. All right, gentlemen, that's the end of privilege. Back to yourselves. Congratulations, Dickie. They can't kill you now. You've been immortalized. Yeah, now you a star, just like me. <laughs> Fuck you, Packy. You ain't no star till you've been on Springer. I've been on Springer six times. Oh, eat me, Otto. Hard copy's better than ten times on that stinking ass Springer. <laughs> you and your hard copy can suck my toes. Oh, man. You small time. You're just too stupid to know it. Tell him, Peggy. Yo, Tooley found out today, Universal Pictures just bought his life story. That's right, baby. Ha! Oh. And there's more. Tell him the rest. De Niro is going to play Tooley and Steven Spielberg directed. And then it's big time. Yeah, big time. That's right. You are a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Next time this year, they'll be right at Universal with my name on it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Sleep good, baby. kill anyone to fit in. I'm perfect. Right? <laughs>